live from the Alfond Arena at the University of Maine, welcome to UMaine Black Bear Basketball. Next, it's the Catamounts of Vermont taking on the Black Bears of the University of Maine in a classic America East matchup. Welcome into the Alfond Arena in Orono. It's spring break for the UMaine students, and the men's basketball team might have gotten a little break themselves as one of the top players in the nation plays for Vermont. He will not be playing. Taylor Coffinrath has a little case of the flu. You have to wonder if this game meant a little bit more to the top-ranked team in the conference that he may be in the lineup, but he is not. And so the Black Bears will have a, kind of a different look to defend this day, John Small, and he and another player, our T.J. Sorrentine, are not playing in this contest. A very different look, Tim. Uh, I think there'll be a lot of disappointed fans here today who came out to see Taylor Coppenrath play. My partner, uh, Bobby Campbell, as always, and we're missing T.J. Sorrentine as well. And when you look back to that game that the Black Bears and Catamounts played in Vermont in January, they had the bulk of the points against the Black Bears. They sure did. Uh, Coppenrath had the game-winning basket with six seconds to go to Edge Mano, 67-66 and they combined for 50 of those 67 points. But I'll tell you, today, I don't think Maine's going to care who's playing. They desperately need a win. You know, team sports, so much of it is about confidence, and they need to be feeling good before they go into the playoffs here. Yeah, they're either going to go in as the fifth or sixth seed, but they've lost five of their last seven, and they really need to get something going going into the playoffs. They do. They haven't won two games in a row since last year, so they need to be feeling good, and now's the time to do it. And I guess uh, for Vermont, uh, they really don't need to have anything happen here today. They've clinched the number one seed. They're okay. They have, but I guarantee you, this is Coach Brennan's last uh, regular season game that he's coaching. I guarantee you he's going to want to win this one awful bad. And I'm sure you'll see some people, you know, kind of a preview of next year's team out here on the floor today. And I'm sure they'll be playing hard and want to get the win and head home tonight. All right, should be a good one. Number one Vermont in town to take on the Black Bears. We'll be back after this. University of Maine Black Bear Sports on WABI TV5 is brought to you by Bangor Motorsports, easy to buy, fun to ride. Bangor Motorsports, Outer Hammond Street, Bangor. Bangor Federal Credit Union, experience service with a personal touch. Bangor Chrysler Dodge, you're the one who drives the deal at Bangor Chrysler Dodge. Hammond Lumber with locations in Auburn, Bangor, Belgrade, Fairfield, Farmington, Greenville, and Skowhegan. The Quirk Boys at Quirk Auto Park. Take a walk in the park. Hogan Road, Bangor. Carpet One of Bangor. When it comes to flooring, nobody does it better. And by Jeep. Test drive a Jeep at your local dealer today. By McDonald's Restaurants of Maine. McDonald's, I'm loving it. By Chevrolet, an American revolution. And by EBS Building Supplies. It's your life living. EBS. Central Maine Motors Auto Group. Cars and trucks really do cost less than Waterville. Sports Arena, the area's premier sports and entertainment complex. 1620 Outer Hammond Street, Bangor. DNK, select used cars in Farmingdale, home of the best warranty. CES, Civil Engineering Services, engineering ideas that are right for Maine. And by Maine Energy, serving Maine for over 70 years, Maine Energy delivers. Welcome back to Alfond Arena, getting set for a men's basketball. Number one, Vermont, in town. And uh, as we mentioned, if you missed it just a few minutes ago, uh, some disappointed fans here at Alfond Arena, Bobby, as uh, one of the top players in the country, uh, Taylor Coppenrath, will not be playing today. He's second in scoring in the country, 24.7 points per game. And on top of that, uh, T.J. Sorrentine uh, injured his hamstring in Vermont's last game, and uh, he adds about 18 points per game, so they're two top scorers out. Yeah, it's unfortunate for the people here who came today, like you said. I mean, those two players are, are probably combined two of the most exciting players that have come through America East in a while, and, they, you know, it just happens to be that they're on the same team. And it's, and it's a tough matchup when you play Vermont. That's right. They've got uh, Sorrentine, who's outside, and Coppenrath inside. You know, every now and then, in, you know, in the, in the not small conferences, I don't want to say, but you'll have that one superstar player, and they're either inside player, which you can concentrate on them, or an outside player, and boy, they really come at you from, from both angles. Well, for Vermont, as you see on your screen there today, this doesn't mean much. They've clinched the number one spot in America East. The first time they have won the title outright, believe it or not, even though they've come out of the uh, America East the last two years to go to the NCAAs. For Maine, though, they could go either fifth or sixth in the America East uh, playoff uh, race, Bobby, and that will affect who they're going to play. Yeah, it will today. I mean, it looks like they're either going to end up playing uh, uh, Albany, 
uh, if they win or if they lose, they could end up playing BU, which that's that, right. that would be a tough first round game. You know, uh, Albany is a team that uh, they've they've beaten this year. You know, BU is a, a team they played well against, but uh, that's a, a formidable first round opponent. So they want to try to get this win here and end the regular season on a good note. Yeah, hopefully we'll be uh, kept up to date today uh, with the other games in America East. Albany is playing Northeastern. BU is at Binghamton. Those are two key games today. Uh, if BU and Northeastern remain tied, uh, I guess Northeastern wins the tiebreaker as they beat BU a couple of times this year. So that means if Maine were to fall into that sixth spot, they would play Boston University. So the best thing for Maine right now is to get that fifth spot, play Albany in the quarterfinals. The only bad news is you're in the bracket with Vermont. So if you win your quarterfinal game, you go up against the Catamounts in the semifinals, but hey, if you're going to get through the tournament, I guess you got to play them sometime, right? That's exactly right, and that's the way it is. You just, you just like to have a little, I don't want to say easier game, but a less, <laughs> less challenging game that first round just to get your playoff legs under you. So they, bottom line, they just need a win, and, and like I said, uh, Coach Ted Woodward, he, he doesn't care who's in the lineup today. He's just telling his kids they're going to go out and play hard. And a nice crowd here today, senior day, so hopefully they'll come out with a lot of intensity early and get the crowd into it. And a nice moment before the game, as we mentioned, Tom Brennan, the 19-year uh, head coach at Vermont. This is his last season, and uh, he'll be leaving after this year, and the UMaine folks presented him with a nice rocking chair uh, before the game today. Well, it's time for today's starting lineups. They're brought to you by Maine six, Savings eight, Federal Credit Union. They treat you like you own the place, because you do. A 6-4 forward from Yaoundi, Cameroon, at number 32, Jermaine Mapajila. A 6-8 senior from Fox, Republic, number 20, the Catamounts are coached by Tom Brennan and assisted by associate head coach Jesse Angel, Patrick Flynn, and Jeff Rush. And now, on your feet for the starting lineup for your University of Maine Black Bears. At guard, a 6'3 senior from South Portland, Maine, number 51, Chris Markwood. At guard, a 6'2 junior from Yarmouth, Massachusetts, number 21, Kevin Reed. At forward, a 6'7 senior from Bangor, Maine, number 32, Joe Campbell. At forward, a 6'9 senior from San Gabriel, Quebec, number 23, David Dubois. At center, a 6'11 senior from Weymouth, Massachusetts, number 20, Mark Flavin. The Black Bears are coached by Ted Woodward, assisted by associate head coach Calvin Oldham, Mike Burton, and Doug Leister. So there you have it, the starting lineups in today's game. A little bit different for Vermont. There's uh, some other players we'll get to see a little playing time with Coppenrath and Sorrentine out. We kind of had a feeling that Sorrentine may not play because he uh, hurt his hamstring in the previous game of Vermont's win over uh, UMBC, but uh, had no idea about Coppenrath. And I think Tim Throckmorton made a good point uh, in the pregame, Bobby, that uh, had this game really meant something, then maybe that flu might have disappeared. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it's a rest game. Uh, nowhere, no way around it. I mean, he played last year with a broken hand, so... Yes, he did. I and mean, he scored 40 points, I think. Yeah, he did. So, you know, a little flu. But, uh, you know, that's uh, when you play hard all year and then work for the first place advantage. You know, that, that's something that plays you back in the end. So the, the regular season definitely means a lot. Absolutely. So the teams will shake hands at center court. We'll get set for basketball here at Alphond Arena. Vermont all set in the number one spot. Maine currently fifth, but they could go sixth in the America East Tournament, which will be held at Binghamton this year. So Martin Klemesh will jump it up against Mark Flavin for the Black Bears. And we are set to go. Tap is up and won by Maine. Kevin Reed with it. Dishes it into the backcourt. Chris Markwood, seniors playing their final home game today. Unless, of course, they were to get to the America East Championship game and be the higher seed. Inside, nice dish, and Markwood will draw the foul. That's something you, you don't see a lot of the guards do when they pass. You know, I watched a lot of the tournament games this last week, and especially you know, at the high school level. You see the guard dish it down inside. Nine times out of ten, their defender's going to turn around and, and not be looking at them, and he took advantage of it right there. He passed it inside, got a nice return pass, and going to the line for two. Markwood shooting about 63% from the line this year. And his first shot is good, and the Black Bears are on the board first. That foul went against Kyle Siplicki. First foul of the game. 
One of the seniors honored here tonight, Mark Wood from South Portland, Maine. Second shot, no good. A rebound yanked down by Dubois. So the Black Bears will set it up again, Bobby. Good job by Dubois right there, getting in, beating his man to the bucket. And he kicked it back out. He didn't really have a lot going on, so good to reset it. Mark Wood, left wing, tosses it into Campbell. They dump it down low, and shot no good under there. Flavin trying to get the basket, and he finally does. Nice drop into the low post by Joe, and Flavin went to the other side of the basket, used the rim as a block for the defender, keep him away from him. So here come the Catamounts, down 3-0 early here. Up top, it's Siplicky. And again, just so strange to see Vermont without Coppenrath out there, you know? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You know, I think if Maine turns up the intensity early here, they can really, really shut down Vermont for a few minutes. They're running an offense, so they're just not used to running with those with their two big guns out there. David Hayne kicks it out to Martin Klemesh. Little baseline floater is no good, and a rebound yanked down by Joe Campbell. He's had a fine career here at the University of Maine. The Bangor High School graduate. Got a nice hand before the game today as they honored the seniors, and a nice move inside by Dubois. He gets the basket, 5-0 Black Bears. It looked pretty easy right there. Sure did. I think that's kind of Coach Woodward's game plan here early. To pound it inside. Klemesh for the Catamounts. Down in the corner goes to Sip Licky. Reed right there with him. Now up top. Duel will try to drive in. The jumper off the back of the iron. No good. A rebound yanked down by Dubois. And a foul on Vermont in that rebounding action as you see Coach Ted Woodward across the way. First season at the helm of the Black Bears. It's going to be tough for Vermont to get any second shots out there with that lineup Maine has in right now. Dubois, Flavin, and, and Campbell. And Campbell, although he's probably the least stature of the three, he really works hard on the defensive rebounds. Yeah, he's been the leading rebounder for the Black Bears on many occasions this year. Inside now, Flavin hands it back to Campbell, back to Flavin. Double teamed on the baseline. They try to get it back to Joe in the corner. Ball knocked out of bounds, I think, by the Catamounts. Joe has more double-doubles this year than anyone else on the team. He has four. Kevin Reed has three. Mark Riddle inbound from the corner. Up top it comes to Reed. And Campbell, top of the circle. Thought about that three. Hauls it back in, gives it back to Markwood. He'll reset the offense. Shot clock down to five seconds. Markwood gives it back up top. Dubois will make the move. They dump it to Campbell. The shot is no good, and the rebound pulled down by Vermont. Right at the buzzer of that 35-second clock. So the Catamount's still looking to get on the board here. Opagila has it. Inside it goes. Now back out to Hain. He's in trouble as he's double teamed immediately. Now Duel will dump it down low. And uh, did they get Campbell for grabbing in there? He did. He came over to help out. He got there just a little bit too late. Good cut by Hain after he'd gotten rid of the ball. He went right to the basket looking for the return pass. You know, it's interesting. The Catamounts are so used to having... Sorrentine and Coppenrath out there, it almost looks like they're out of whack a little bit. They don't know who to go to. Oh, exactly. I mean, you know, for, for the casual viewer, you might say, well, just somebody else shoot. But when you are used to all season, I mean, even in practice and things like that, used to someone else shooting and from somewhere, I mean, you look at the shots they're taking. I mean, the, sh the shots they're taking, they're basically they're taking them because the shot clock's running down. And somebody's got to shoot. Yeah, that was Clemas. His shot no good. Now Campbell from the baseline. That's no good. A rebound pull down by Duval. Oh, a nice reverse layup. Maine really having their way on the glass on both ends now. Clearing it in one shot and done on their end and then putting, getting some putbacks on the offensive glass. Black Bears have scored the first seven points of this game and they've held Vermont scoreless for three and a half minutes. On the right side, Klemesh drives through, puts it up and in. First basket of the game for the Catamounts. Another thing will be conditioning. You're going to have some kids out there. Just took a long bus ride. They're going to have to play a lot of extra minutes. Mopagila steals it away and slams it home on the other end. So all of a sudden, a little life to Vermont. Yeah, and that's what Maine doesn't want to do. You don't want to give this team life. You want to make them feel like, you know, they're probably doubting whether they can win or not anyway without their two best players out there. You want to keep them down. Mm -hmm. Read the three-pointer from the top of the circle. It's good. Now well, that gets it back to a six-point game. That'll help right there. Reed also with a... Fine career here at the university. Just a junior. He'll be back next year. One of the best three-point shooters the university's ever seen. Now Vermont. Siplicki trying to drive baseline. He'll draw the foul. Go against Markwood. There's Coppenrath over on the bench. 
As we've got our first time out of the game, it is Maine 10, Vermont 4. We are back to the Alphon right after this. Welcome back to Alphon Arena. John Small along with Bobby Campbell. We played a little over four minutes here in the first half, and the Black Bears with a six-point lead over Vermont. Duell now has it up top. Hands it off to Siplicki. Now out to Duell. Campbell almost had the steal. Duell fire up the two-point shot from the top of the key, and it's good. Oh, that hurts right there. If it, ha if it works, it's great. If it doesn't, they make you pay. That time they did make you pay. Now Campbell went for the steal, and that allowed Duell to get open. On the other end now, Ernest Turner has checked in after the timeout for the Black Bears. He'll take the shot from the paint. It is no good. A rebound, Catamounts. Turner missed uh, four games. Just came back uh, the last game against BU with a shoulder injury. So he's back in the lineup for the Black Bears. Now Campbell's got the steal. And he's going to race Duel to the basket, but Duel will foul him. Now let's see, is that a continuation? <laughs> it would be in the NBA. I think they gave it to him here. I don't think so. <laughs> About a third of the crowd wanted it, so you can tell that, you know, it was a half-hearted, come on. You'll see it here. He, there he fouls him. One, two, three. Yeah. Not really a bad foul, as no, uh, was a great Joe foul. was going to get the basket. No, it was a great foul. Now on the baseline, the jumper by Reed is no good. He gets his own rebound inside of the glass. Good hustle by Kevin Reed. Good job staying with it. It really like, looked like Gila was going to have the rebound and kind of fumbled it. Reed just happened to stay right there. Back to a six-point lead for the Black Bears. Now Siplicki driving inside, gets it back up top to Klemesh. Now Mopajila on the left side. He'll come into the paint, dishes it off to nobody. As, uh, let's see, David Hain over there. He zigged when he should have zagged. That's, that's out of sync. Just players doing things with, I bet in the regular scheme of their offense, you never hardly see Gila dribble that much at all. He's probably, you know, spot-up shooter, making cuts to the basket. He's just doing things today he doesn't usually do. Now Reed, back out to Turner. Right side it goes to Jason Height, who's also checked in for the Black Bears. Turner on that left wing. Maine with a six-point lead. Shot clock down to 12 seconds. Now Height gets it into Campbell. The lob pass down to Dubois. And Dubois having a hard time hanging on to it. The Catamount steal it away. Nice job down there by Mopajila. Now Siplicki turns on the Jets, comes in the paint, takes it right to the hoop, and he'll draw the foul. Good drive to the basket. He felt that they weren't going to have much on the offensive set, so he said, hey, I'll take what they give it to me. He's, there, he's made his decision on right there. Dubois, Dubois uh, kind of a half-hearted effort at helping there. He caught with his feet stuck. Well, somebody's got to take over the game for the Catamounts, in case you're just joining us, not to repeat ourselves, but uh, their top two players are out today. Taylor Coppenrath, one of the top players in the country, has a, a case of the flu, and uh, T.J. Sorrentine had injured his hamstring in the last uh, game that uh, Vermont played. So those two guys are out. So Blicky at the line, and he gets them both. So it's a four-point main lead. Well, full court pressure now by the Catamounts. Trying to rattle the Black Bears a little bit, but they handle it well. Down to Turner. Now Campbell in the corner to Height. Back up top to Turner. Thought about that three, but Mopajila was right on him. Markwood left side. Brings it back up top. Gives it to Turner. Turner looking to drive. Gives it to Campbell just inside the circle. He'll run through the paint. Toss it up. No good. Kind of a wild shot. Rebound pulled down by Hayne. And here come the Cats. And Hayne goes right through the paint. There was the defense there, Bobby. No, uh, there was none there. I'm surprised Coach River didn't call a timeout right there. He was unhappy about those two last possessions. Maine on the offensive end, well, I think it's more Vermont, actually, has turned up the defense. Maine had their way early. Vermont playing with a lot more energy on the defensive end, rebounding especially. Maine now not getting any second shots. Campbell missed the shot from the elbow. On the other end, Duel on the baseline. He'll drive to the paint, dishes it out to Siplicki. Got his man in the air. The baseline jumper is good, and just like that, we're tied at 12. Remember, the Black Bears got out to the 7-0 lead here, but Vermont has come back. That's what I was going to say. That may have hurt Maine early. They started out scoring pretty easy, figuring this was going to be a kind of a walk in the park, and Vermont's picking it up. If I remember correctly, this may be a mirror image of the game at Vermont. I think Vermont got out to a 10-1 lead, and the Black Bears came back. 
right. Vermont with the steal up off the glass. The shot is good by David Hayne, and he'll be at the line. I don't think Coach Woodward's happy with that. He thought there may have been a foul the other way, but uh, he's not going to get it. You see right there. Boy, he just grazed him. He didn't get him with his hands. Kevin Reed is back in the ballgame for the Black Bears, and Timothy McCrory has come in for the Cats. We're going to see Chris Bruff into the ball game now for the first time for Maine. There he is right there. And Hayne at the line trying to complete the three-point play. He does, and just like that, Vermont has gone on top by three. And they were down by seven to start the game. Pressure again, almost a tip in the backcourt, but Reed fires it up to Bruff. Bruff goes right to the basket, bounce pass down low to Flavin, knocked away by the Cats. Good luck, and that's what you want to do against a full court trap like that. As soon as you break it, go right to the basket. You, you, you know you're going to have the numbers. Take advantage of it on your offensive end, rather than waiting for the defense to come back and set up. Nice pass from Reed down to Flavin, and he's fouled down there on the baseline by Martin Clemesh. Good job. Oh, good ball. <laughs> Using his body. <laughs> that was close, I was going to say. Got the ball with a hand, didn't he? So Flavin at the foul line here. Flavin, the third leading scorer for the Black Bears this year. Just about 10 points per game, 9.8. And a 74% free throw shooter. I've watched him a few times this year, too, and I think he's one of those guys that can come out and get you 20 points and 10 rebounds. He really is. They just have to get him the ball. Sometimes they do a good job of getting it to him early. The defense kind of picks up in the post, and they tend to go away from him a little bit when it gets more difficult to get him the ball. I think it's, he could really be a great asset to the team. And watching him over the years, he's got a nice touch for a big guy. Oh, he really does. He's 6'11", and he, yep. he just shoots the lights out. Yeah, he's a great athlete. Well, it's a one-point game again. Vermont on top. Klamesh, spin move, top of the circle, goes the left side to Mopajila, he fires it up, no good, a rebound, two Black Bears fighting for it, and Flavin, the taller of the two, will haul it down. Now Reed on the other end, up top to Flavin. Flavin looking for help and uh, gets it back to Bruff, but just barely. Now Reed will set the offense. Campbell tossing it over to Reed, but a whistle away from the ball. Elbow foul will be called on the Black Bears. And they're going to get Flavin on that one. And Maine wants a timeout. They're down by one. We are back after this. Eleven thirty to go here in the first half at Alphon Arena. The Black Bears down by one to Vermont, and the Catamounts have the ball. Vermont 6 for 10 from the floor in this half for 60%. The Black Bears at 5 for 12 for 42% as the foul is called on the other end. And that will go against Jason Height. That was an easy one. You could have called that one, James. <laughs> now the steal by Height. He takes it all the way to the hole, puts it up and in. Nice move. Great anticipation. You see a lot of the main players doing that, trying to go for the steals. Coach Woodward really teaches the philosophy of getting your hand out there in the passing lane, trying to tip it, and sometimes if you get lucky, you can even steal it. But at least get a part of your hand on it. Black Bears on top. Ryan Schneider takes the shot from the right wing. He checked in after the timeout, missed it, and Height gets the rebound. Up court quickly to Reed. Here he comes. Fires it inside. Nice pass to Campbell. Nowhere to go, though, down on the baseline. Gets it back out to Reed. Can he save it on the sideline? He does. And let's see, Height's going to get it in the backcourt. Nice hustle by Height and a nice hustle by Reed to save that thing. Now Reed will fire up the three from the left side. He got it. That's how you like those exchanges to end right there if you're main. <laughs> back and forth, back and forth. End with a three. Tom Brennan thought that was a backcourt. He's still pleading his case. Yeah, I think Gila hit it first, though. I think he did, too. So Maine back on top by four here. Shot on the other end. Oh, nice look there by Klemesh, and he drains it right over Flavin. Uh, now Flavin knows he has to get out there. Big guy like that, you give him one shot, make him prove it to you. I don't think he shoots a very high percentage usually. Just rough for three, that's a round and out. Rebound yanked down by Timothy McCrory for the Catamounts. Two-point lead for the Black Bears. We're halfway through the first half. 
Ball's on the floor in the paint, picked up by Campbell, gets it out to Height. Nice play by Joe. Tough pass by Jensen there, threw it at his big man's feet. Rough, splits the defense, but then lost the ball, and it goes right to Mopajila. Boy, he had two players, two of his teammates down in front of him. Three-point shot from the corner, no good by Alex Jensen, rebound Flavin. And Jensen, I think he's mad, he's the only reason I think he shot it was because he was out in front of that time and didn't get the ball. So felt like he had a shot coming to him. Black Bears with the ball and the two-point lead. Reed shot from three, I believe, anyway. It might have been a two. It's no good nonetheless. Catamounts with the rebound. Schneider now on the left wing. Back to Mopajila. Mopajila from Cameroon. Drives inside. Oh, nice move. They'll draw the foul. That's too, e too easy from the main perspective right there. You can't let a guy go from the top of the key right to under the basket. No one stepping up in front of him. You'll see it right here by one main player, by two main players. Got to get up and square your shoulders to him and stop his progress. So at the line, Mopajila, a senior from Cameroon. He'll have a couple of shots here. And the first one is good. Interesting a technique there, isn't it? He holds that ball right down, almost underhanded, before he fires it up. As long as he does the same thing every time. Right. That's what free throw shooting is all about. He averages about five and a half points per game. You know, you look at all the other guys on this team, you know, they're all right around five and a half, four, six points per game because of the contributions of Coppenrath and Sorrentine. So today's their chance to get those uh, point totals up for those two guys out as he got both foul shots. And we are tied at 19. They're going to stick with the full court pressure. They must see something in the main offense. And thinks they can maybe get some turnovers or get them out of sorts a little bit. Also, choose up a little bit of the shot clock as well. The main's only, they're starting to get into their offense right now. You've got 23 seconds on the shot clock, so that's less time that they have to defend down here. Maybe even you end up using less energy by traveling. Turner has it. Right side now it goes to height. Screen set by Oli Avenemi. But we get those elbows in there again, and the Black Bears are called for the foul. And Coach Ted Woodward doesn't look too happy right now, does he? No, they got Avenemi. He's, he, uh, he's trying to use his arms to gain position rather than his body. The officials are a lot more likely to call you if you're flailing your arms to try to move someone than backing up. Schneider to three. It's short. Rebound comes right down to Duel. He tried to get the pass inside, but tipped away by the Black Bears. But luckily for the Catamounts, it comes right back to Duel. So they'll reset the offense. Siblicki moves around a screen set by Duel. Behind the back dribble, almost knocked away by Turner. Now Hain with it. He spins. Dishes it back to Schneider. In the corner to Hain. Drives baseline, dumps it off. Oh, nice pass, and Schneider gets the easy layup. I'll start with a great head fake in the corner by Hain. Main came over, good help on the ball to begin with, but no one rotated down from the other side. To get the player under there. Just a little late. No one showed up. So Vermont back on top by two. 7.40 to go here in the first half. Baseline drive by Turner, cut off, back up top to Dubois. He tries to set the screen for Turner, gives it to Height. Inside to Ole, up off the glass, no good. Had the shot, just missed it. Great entry pass, great position. Like you said, just all you do is put it down from there. Everything right up to that point. Siglicki now brings it right side to Hain. Corey now dishes it left side to Schneider. On the baseline, nowhere to go, out to Duel. Inside to McCrory, spin move, and the shot I think was blocked a bit there by Ole. And now Turner speeding up court, gives it to Dubois, comes powering through the paint, and he'll draw the foul. Well, Black Bears didn't want to waste any time there as they moved it right up the court quickly. Seven minutes to go here in the first half. Black Bears trail by two. We are back after this. The Black Bear men's hockey team wraps up the regular season on the road at Boston College next weekend. Big game. Saturday's game will be shown live right here on TV5. Dubois hits the first foul shot. Gets Maine within one. Second shot is up. No good. Rebound pulled down by the Catamounts. Hain with it. 
So a 6.55 to go. It's a one-point game. Payne dishes it back up top to Saplicki. Saplicki falls down, and the Black Bears take over. He just tripped himself right yeah. there. He didn't, he didn't complain or anything. Turner fires up the three. No good. Rebound Schneider for the Cats. A tough shot early in the shot clock. You'd think that maybe they could get a little better shot than that, or maybe even you know, if they have to settle for something like that, go ahead, but work it around a little bit. Now Duel trying to work on Dubois. Puts it up high off the glass. Missed the shot. Big rebound by Dubois. Just took it right away from the forward. Good defense, too. Held his ground. Stayed straight up. Didn't bail him out by fouling him. Nice bounce pass into Flavin. Gets the shot and the foul. Great pass from Turner. That was good hands to, to catch it, too. So the Black Bears back on top. Let's see right here. Bounce pass came up nice and high for him, though, the big man. Gathered himself. McCrory thought he was straight up. He told the official he was, but you could see in that replay right there. He was all over him. Flavin completes the three-point play, and the Black Bears back on top by two. On the other end, Sip Licky drives to the foul line, nothing there. Now Schneider on the right wing. They'll try to move inside, but steal by Height. Off to the races with McCrory. Height will take it all the way in. Missed the shot, but right there for the run is Flavin. Nice play. That was the right decision by Height, too. Flavin was trailing him, but he was so far behind that he would have had to wait up for the rest of the Vermont defense. So good decision by taking it right to the hoop. You can see he kind of looks back here, but he said, no, I've got the lane. I'm going to take it. Flavin, good hustle. Yeah, there he is. Pays off for him. All 6'11 of him. Splicky just probably not a good idea to foul Flavin at that point. Just let him go. Should have done. So Flavin, with his 11th point of the game, gives the Black Bears a five-point lead. Catamounts back to work on offense. Hain with it. Gets around Turner, but uh, Turner committed the foul as uh, Hain turned the corner. The main coaching staff, you like to see that intensity, though, out of Turner. That's, that's where your defense really starts on the opposing point guard. You put pressure on the point guard, and it really throws the offense off, getting into their set. I've seen a lot of fouls in this first half, Bobby. Nine on the Black Bears and seven on Vermont. It's the first foul shot is good. You see Turner really ball hawking the ball, keeping him on one side of the floor. Yeah, he thought he was going to come back. Uh, the reach, a little bit lazy. Hain got both foul shots. Three-point game again. Black Bears on top. I hate to foul, too, with a team that's struggling on their offensive set. You know, get them on the foul line for two easy points rather than making them earn it. Vermont going to a zone here. A little different look this time down. Harknell has che checked in for the Black Bears. Turner now. Back up top, it goes to Height. Turner. Comes top of the circle, back to height, dishes it inside to Dubois, kicks it back out to Turner, wanted to take three, but good defense by the Catamounts. So instead, they'll settle from the, for the two from the foul line. Great job by the main offense that time, swinging the ball around, really made Vermont work in that zone. You work it long enough against the zone, and, well, that intensity, intensity on defense turn by Turner paid off right there. Yeah, nice play over there on Hain. He just lost the dribble out of bounds. Nice pass out from Dubois. Turner just keeps dribbling, dribbling. Waits for his man to fall off him in that zone. Responsible for an area of the floor, not the man. And the man just left him, let him go that time. Dubois couldn't get the shot to fall in the paint. So back to Vermont. Inside pass. Oh, nice dish underneath and an easy basket by Martin Flemesh. Excellent pass. The Black Bears will bring it up again. They've got the three-point lead. Harknell to Dubois. Back out to Height. They swing it to Turner. He'll fire up the three. Again, inside out. If you can get the ball inside the, ba uh, the ba uh, basket area, the bucket area, or on the baseline, and then back out, it really is tough for the defenders to get back out to the other shooters on the wings. Back to a six-point lead for the Black Bears. Flamesh with it, up top. Left side, it goes to Jensen. Now Duel out deep. Left side, Jensen wide open for three, and he'll answer right back. Yeah, that was a great pick down on the baseline by Duel to 
spring Jensen Height got caught up down there on the box area and just couldn't get out in time. A couple of the uh, games that we're interested in in America East today as Height takes the three and he answers right back. Northeastern leading Albany right now by six with three minutes to go in the first half. And look at this one, Bobby Binghamton on top of BU by 12 with 5.11 to go in the first half. Wow, that might be one of those last games of the season where BU says, you know, kind of subconsciously, no matter whether we win or lose, we're, we're going to go in the same spot so they're not maybe giving it their all. You see that at the end of the season. Good defense here by the Black Bears as they're really forcing the Cats to the outside. Eight seconds to go on the shot clock. Now, Kane will just fire up the three. It's no good. A rebound knocked out of bounds by Vermont. So, 3.05 to go here in the first half. Black Bears have the six-point lead over the Catamounts. We're back to the Alphonse right after this. Welcome back to Alphon Arena. John Small along with Bobby Campbell. Three minutes to go here in the first half, and the Black Bears have the six-point lead and the ball. Campbell back in the game for the Black Bears. He's played a lot today, and I think uh, that's only appropriate. Hometown fans here like to see a lot of Joe, his last uh, game as a senior. Vermont uh, takes the ball away, and here they come again. Joe's been pretty steady. I think he's been a very steady player, yes. He's the only player to start in every game. Clemesh has the ball knocked away by Joe Campbell, and the Black Bears get it back. And they almost throw it away in the backcourt, but Height saves it. Nice job. Yeah, Joe got a real nice hand before the game today when they introduced the seniors in their final game. Of course, he's got the hometown crowd here. Sure. Now Harknell inside. It goes to Dubois. Back up top to Height. Comes to the foul line. Dishes it to Turner. Turner drives through the defense off the glass, won't get the shot, but he'll draw the foul. This drive, Turner's strong too. When he gets down there, he's gonna get a shot up. You're gonna have to foul him nine times out of 10. Keep him from getting a look at the basket. You'll see the drive right here. He goes in strong, jump stop. Almost got it to go. Yeah, he'll be at the foul line here. He's the leading scorer on this Black Bears team. Missed four games, though, with that shoulder injury. Came back uh, last week against BU. Hits the foul shot there. Yeah, he did that in that home game against Albany. It was one of those ones where you get up in the air, and you, if, you, if you could come down on your own, you'd be okay. But he's in the air, and he got knocked in the air and came down on a terrible angle right on the shoulder. Didn't look like much, but sometimes those are the worst injuries. Turner. Second shot from the line, looking for his seventh point of the afternoon. Doesn't get it. And the rebound tipped out to the Catamount. So still a seven-point Black Bears lead with 2.05 to go here in the first half. Hayne trying to move around a screen set up by Duell. Can't do it. Now down in the corner, it goes to Mopajila. Little shuck and jive down there, and he'll put the shot up. No good. The rebound tipped around, and it's Turner who comes away with it. Now Turner on the other end. In the corner it goes to Height. Gets his man in the air. Dishes it into Flavin. Flavin misses. Gets his own rebound. Put back won't go. Now Campbell's got a chance. His turnaround jumper is good, but uh, he had been fouled before that shot. I, I really like that lineup. That's the lineup the uh, front court that Maine started with. Dubois, Flavin, and Joe. And That's when they were dominating the boards. And you see here, Flavin's going to miss. You've got Dubois there out in front of the basket. And Campbell. Great work on the offensive glass. Now they're missing uh, Coppenrath in there on the boards. He's a, he averages about nine rebounds per game. Well, I'll tell you, Sorrentin, in his own right, does a good job. He each had eight rebounds apiece in that game in Vermont that Maine lost. So he's picking up those ones around the foul line area. I don't know what he averages per game, but I know he did well in that one. Well, Campbell hits a couple from the line, and the main lead is up to nine, their biggest lead of the game with... A minute and a half to play here in the first half. They'd really like to lock him up here this last minute and a half. Maybe get him to the halftime with double-digit lead. Fans wanted to travel there on Hayne. They won't get it. Duel for three. No good. A rebound yanked down quickly by Height. Height doesn't have a lot of height. 6-3, but that rebound came right to him. Now Flavin trying to move on the baseline. Has the ball knocked out of bounds by the Catamounts. When you have a guard like that, get a 
get a rebound in that case, it's usually a good sign because that means your big guys are blocking out their men so the guards can come back. That's why guards can play a really important key in the rebounding on the defensive end. And they go right back to Flavin. Hoff off the glass, no good, but uh, knocked out of bounds by Dubois. So Vermont will get the ball back. With a minute three remaining here in the first half. There's Tom Brennan in his 19th and final season with the Vermont Catamounts. Used to go out with the technical. <laughs> <laughs> he sat down pretty quickly there, didn't he? I tell you, he's had a great career. He really uh, rejuvenated that Vermont program and brought them some national recognition the last few years. And probably not a good example here, <laughs> getting the technical, but he, he really is a nice guy and, and a very well-respected coach well, across think, the country. Oh, most certainly. I think what he's doing here, maybe he... He may, I mean, he's a good coach. He feels it may be slipping away here. They're down by nine, so. Give his team a spark, maybe. He's, he's, uh, yeah, I mean, not, and even maybe set it up so maybe he can get some calls or, you know, work the official a little bit for the second half. Get his kids in at halftime, get them rested. As again, like we were talking, the kids haven't seen the type of minutes they're going to see today. They're going to be tired, especially after that long bus trip. And, yes. You know, and just thinking about the long one home, I'm glad I don't have to drive with him. That's a haul. That's a long drive over Route 2 to Burlington, isn't it? Oh, I was love, love Burlington. Burlington's a great spot, but beautiful. Getting, this time there, of year getting there is not fun. <laughs> yeah. I was talking to one of the uh, Vermont staff, and they said that Coach Brennan usually will drive his car here alone. And uh, for this trip, he actually came with the team on the bus. Well, first, first time he's ever done that. Last trip to Maine. And now we got a foul in the rebounding action on the Black Bears. Campbell hit both uh, technical foul shots, by the way, so it's... An 11 point lead for Maine here with 44 seconds to go in the first half. We'll walk down to the other end. And Alex Jensen will be at the line for the Catamounts. First foul shot is good. Again, uh, we point out Bobby Jensen averages only about three points per game, so a lot of these guys don't see a lot of playing time when you've got Sorrentine and Coppenrath in there. Jensen gets one of two. It's a ten-point game. Black Bears on top. Height with it now. Hain trying to stay with him. They move around. A, I guess it's a double screen set by Flavin and Dubois. Inside, though, the shot knocked away by Vermont. And they'll have the ball back. Good help defense right there. Look for a second like Height had a clear lane right to the hoop. Look up to him quick. So you can turn the shot clock off here. As Vermont can play for the final shot of this first half. They're down by 10. And Jensen will just dribble over by the scorer's table. Down to 10 seconds. Let's see. You gotta go quick here. Hain runs into Flavin. They've got a hurry here. Pass down on the baseline, and uh, boy, and a foul called with two seconds remaining. And the fans don't like that one too much. That's too bad. They're going to get the penalty here as well. Two shots, and ten fouls, ten team fouls in Maine. Black Bears call a 30-second timeout here with just two seconds remaining. Maybe trying to set up a final play off the foul shots. Well, you know, quite frankly, Bobby, there hasn't been a lot of intensity in this game from either side. There really hasn't. This is a game that Maine could have come out and really knocked Vermont out, I thought. They let him back in a little bit. They're starting to pull away now. Some good defense the last two or three minutes here of the first half. If they can go in, well, they're going to go in probably up eight or nine here. Get in the locker room. Come out and put a, put a good effort forth in the first three minutes of the second half. I mean, they, can, they can end this game. They can make it easier for themselves. That's what I'm trying to say. So Jensen misses the first foul shot. Well, uh, you kind of understand, Vermont, they don't really have anything to play for here. But if you're Maine, boy, I think you'd rather be in the fifth spot than the sixth spot. You would avoid BU in the first round of the uh, tournament playoffs. I'd certainly want to try. One or two from the line, and let's see the steal by Schneider, and uh, he can't get uh, the shot up, but he's fouled. You get a foul. I think they're going to get height. Oh, boy. Oh, rough. They're going to get height with the foul. Do you think that's how they drew it up over Oof. there? That's got to drive you nuts if you're a coach right there. 
No time on the clock, and Schneider just taking a silly off-balance shot, and he gets fouled. And you can see uh, the look of disgust on Coach Woodward's face over there. So Schneider can really make the Black Bears pay here, but he misses the first foul shot. He's bailing out somebody over there on the sideline from Maine. <laughs> now you see Tom Brennan over there. He's up off the bench and talking to one of the officials. He's trying to make his case for what's going on here in the first half as a Schneider gets one of two from the line. So, Brennan's still talking to the official. Now he's got a smile on his face and he'll walk away. So we have come to halftime and the Black Bears have an eight point lead over the visiting Catamounts of Vermont, 39 to 31. And let's send it over to Tim Throckmorton who is with Coach Woodward. Thanks very much, John. Uh, Ted, first of all, I guess uh, without a couple of key players in the Vermont lineup today, was there almost an adjustment to, uh, to playing against uh, maybe some guys that you would prepare to play? Absolutely. I mean, there's some adjustment. Uh, you know, we uh, really wanted to play against, uh, you know, the best they got. That's what competitors want to do. But, you know, we've been used to that this year. You know, we, uh, we've had some adjustments in our lineup throughout the course of the year, too. So, uh, and we still have them. So, uh, you know, we just want to come out and, uh, you know, do the best we can here for 40 minutes. All games kind of playoff type games at this point? They are. I mean, our guys are excited to get out here today and play against Vermont. Obviously, they're the reigning champs, so you don't uh, become champs unless you beat the champs. So uh, it's exciting for us. Win one for the seniors. Fans. Absolutely. Thank you. Ted Woodward, uh, head coach of the Maine men's basketball team in his first year. He'd like to have a, a good senior night for these uh, Black Bears. And we're back with more halftime when we come back after this. Black Bears lead it by eight. Welcome to the Luigi Fredericks Black Bear Basketball Halftime Show. Luigi and Fredericks, again, voted number one florist by you, the public. Welcome back to the Alpha Arena on the campus of the University of Maine. Black Bears lead it at halftime, last game of the regular season, and the Black Bears lead it by eight. We're going to switch gears a little bit and talk a little bit of uh, track here at UMaine. You know, Hannah Pelletier was one of the top athletes and very fast runner at Nesolonsky High School in Oakland. Now she is becoming a very good 800 meter runner at the University of Maine. Oh, Hannah. Here we go, Hannah. I want to go to the Olympics. I'm going to redshirt my senior year and then my fifth year is an Olympic year, so I'll be able to train hard and hopefully get my time down so I can make it to the trials. Just a sophomore, she and Mark Leck have it all figured out. She ran two minutes, 19 seconds in high school, and last year, a 209. So every year, my pace, my practice pace is going to just keep getting faster and faster until my senior, my fifth year, when I hopefully can get it down to under two minutes. A year ago, she was listed as one of the top 10 freshman 800 meter runners in the country. She also just set the school record in the 1,000. I have, a, I have endurance and speed. Like, some, like the distance runners, mostly endurance. Sprinters have the speed. I have a little bit of both. So like every year, the 800 is getting faster and faster. So it's becoming like more of like a sprint a little bit. So I mean, and when it starts to hurt is when you have to tell yourself, OK, this is good. Like, I want to make this hurt more. Blanking out the pain for two minutes hopefully will allow her to lower her times and reach her goals. That one race where you like break through and stuff is the best. It's like all the reward like that in one race. So it's really cool. This past weekend at the New England Championships, Hannah Pennant's Pelletier finished fourth in the 200 meter run with the sight set on the Olympics maybe in a couple of years. We're at halftime, Maine's taking on Vermont and we have the little lady dribblers from Gray, New Gloucester area doing their thing on the court. Black Bears lead at 39-31. We're back with more halftime here at the Alphonse Arena after this. Welcome back to the Alphonse Arena. Black Bear men's basketball this afternoon here in this facility. And of course, uh, this is the home of the Black Bear hockey team. And the main hockey team played UMass Lowell this weekend and played very well with a 2-0 win on Friday night. And then last night on TV5, Maine with another win. Ten minutes into the first period, though, it didn't look so good as uh, Mike Lundin fans on the pass and Jason uh, Teachma, the shorthanded goal. Jimmy Howard with his 14th shutout this weekend, but not last night. But the Black Bears did come back. John Ronan deflects in a John Jankis pass. It was one to one. After Lowell took the lead again, Maine tied it at two. Mike Hamilton to Derek Damon with the wrister from the slot. It was two to two. With one second left in the second period, John the John Ronan scores again. Maine goes on to win five to three. Black Bears need to do very well against Boston College this coming weekend, as Maine will need to get some more points 
as uh, the Black Bears are not a sure thing for the NCAA tournament, but uh, of course making the steps in the right direction with the weekend sweep over UMass Lowell. And by the way, it was supposed to be the season opener for UMaine baseball and UMaine softball down in Florida, but they did not have as bright and clear skies as we did up here in Maine. Both teams were rained out today. They'll try to play their season openers tomorrow. No Taylor Coppenrath, no TJ Sorrentine, and the Black Bears seem to have figured things out. They're playing a lot better at the end of the first half. Now let's go back over to John Small and Bobby Campbell as we get ready for the second half of the Vermont Clash. Guys? All right, thanks, Tim. And uh, yes, we are getting ready for the second half. And uh, when you look at the uh, numbers from that first half, Bobby, uh, for Vermont, they're really, I guess, trying to just figure things out. And for, for Maine, uh, they've had some balanced scoring. Yeah, they really have. You can see nothing real remarkable there. I think the one thing that maybe has Maine with this lead is the rebounding. They all rebounded Vermont a lot earlier, had a lot more opportunities to the basket, some second chance points. Other than that, I think it's just uh, their defense that got them this lead. The numbers really don't tell much about this game. It hasn't had much of a flow yet, really, to it. We were talking a little about it off camera. I think the team that comes out first and plays the hardest, picks up the intensity, may gain an advantage here. And I think the three-point shooting has uh, done the Black Bears well, too. They're four for seven uh, from behind the arc. Uh, Vermont right now just one for seven. So that, uh, I guess if you do some of the math there, and I'm not good at math, but uh, that could be the difference in the ball game right now, too. Yeah, it sure is. One for seven isn't good, no matter what percentage it is. And that's where you miss a Soren team. Those, those wide open three-pointers that Vermont usually gets because Coppenrath is kicking it out from inside. Now they're contested three-pointers because you don't have that option in there. And I'm guessing that uh, Coppenrath's gone back to the bus. Uh, we'd mentioned he's got a case of the flu. He'd been sitting on the bench uh, for the first half, and he came out with his coach uh, just a moment ago, shook his hands, shook uh, the assistant coach's hands, and then left the building. So yeah, he I may mean, not be feeling well. If he's got the flu that bad, I don't want him sitting <laughs> next to the rest of my guys anyway. That's right. You know, you don't want to get to the tournament and have three or four guys come down with the flu. So get him out of here, get him some rest. Well, their first uh, game in the tournament will be uh, next Saturday. I think he'll be better by then, don't you? I'm sure he will be. <laughs> I'm sure he will be. In this tournament where he's a senior, it'll be a chance for him to uh, showcase himself because he's a guy who wants to play at the next level, whatever yes, that may does. be for him, Europe or NBA or what have you. Mopajila drives inside for the Cats on their first possession of the second half. It's no good. A rebound comes down to the Black Bears, and Mark Wood with it. By the way, uh, some halftime scores, games of interest today. Northeastern leading Albany by one at the half. Inside Dubois. Will the shot count? No basket. Foul before the shot. Kind of a surprise at Binghamton. Binghamton uh, leading BU right now. 36-22 as we see the replay here, Bobby. Yeah, nice pass by Joe. Nice bounce pass in the lane. And that's not always the easiest thing to do in that close is to put it on the floor. But sometimes it's a way to avoid those arms in there. Those scores important to the Black Bears because they could go fifth or sixth in America East depending on what happens here today and what happens elsewhere, too. Inside, Dubois, nice power move to the basket. He just kept backing down in closer, waiting to see if any help was going to come, and it finally came, but it was much too late. He was already in there before a three-foot sh shot by the time the help came. So Dubois with a uh, nice afternoon. As he now has six points. Cats with the ball back, down by 10. Here's Klemesh for three, no good. Rebound tipped right back out to the Catamounts. Duel steps inside the three-point arc. His shot no good, and Flavin won't let him get a rebound that time. Flavin has had a nice game for the Black Bears here today. Their leading scorer with 10 points. Now Reed lobs it into Flavin. Flavin back out to Joe Campbell. Back down to Flavin on the baseline. Easy basket. Nice. Give and go there as Campbell gave it right back to Flavin. I like to see those big guys work well together like that. You know, great pass. And Joe Campbell's an excellent passer anyway. You made a good point. Uh, this was the starting lineup uh, at the beginning of the game. They've done really well with Dubois, Flavin, and Campbell in there. That trifecta seems to be working. It really does because you know, Campbell, for one thing, offers so much for you. He's a tough matchup. You'll see here. You'll see Joe with the ball. Nice drive, draws the defense, put it up nice and high for Flavin. Just kisses it off the glass. And Campbell just made a nice play as the rebound uh, kind of got knocked down to him. He knocked it out of bounds off of a Vermont player, and so Maine gets it back and a foul on the other end. I'm Maine right now. I just keep pounding it inside. Just yes. go to Dubois, Absolutely. Flavin, Dubois, Flavin. Make Vermont go to his zone or, or change something up. 
biggest lead of the game for the Black Bears. Almost a steal there by Hain, but uh, Turner, excuse me, uh, Reed hauls it in. Now inside Flavin, back out to Campbell, wide open for the jumper, and he drills it. It's not going to get any easier than that right there. If, if, if you work the ball inside, pound it inside, you end up with wide open shots like that. Vermont wants a timeout as uh, Tom Brennan comes on the court, calls that timeout. His team now down by 14 early here in the second half, and we'll return to Alphonse Arena right after this. Oh, we're going to stay here. Flavin just draws the double team. Joe's man was nowhere to be found, just like practice. So the Black Bears have uh, done what they want to do here in the second half, Bobby. They've come right out, and uh, they've got the hot hand early. Exactly. I mean, you know, it's a cliche, but, you know, those first three minutes of the second half are always so important. And they look like they've really made up their mind to come out and put this team away early. Well, the Black Bears have increased their eight-point lead to 14 here. And just a reminder, TV5 is your home for March Madness. The NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Tournament begins with first-round playoffs on Thursday, March 17th, right here on TV5. All right, Coach Brennan has had his say with his team. And Vermont will have the ball down by 14. Duel now. Up top, Mark Wood right there with him. Pass inside, tipped by three Black Bears, and it finally comes down to Reed. Offered to Campbell, he lays it up and in. Great pass and catch right there. Boy, what do you have to say about Joe out there on the front of the best break? Looked Take like a wide off. receiver, didn't he? He sure did. Good and now, uh, Reed. Yeah. Foul on the Catamounts. Everything going Main's way right now. Here's that pass. Look at that. Coming right at you. Nice, right in stride. Didn't bother putting it on the floor. Main on a nice run here early. 8-0 run to start the second half. And they lead by 16. And it goes to Flavin. Turn around, a little hook shot there. Won't fall. Rebound comes down to Klemesh. And the Cats on the run here, looking for their first basket of the second half. Shot inside, blocked by Dubois, but it comes back down to the Cats. And boy, there's the elbow. Vermont uh, gets called for the foul there, I think. Uh, Joe, good job taking the offensive foul. Yeah, Duel just put that elbow right into him. He was trying to escape. He had nowhere to go, you'll see here. You've got Flavin, Dubois, Joe. He certainly wasn't going to try to shoot it down there. No, and Joe had set up shot nicely there. Now Mark with the Reed in the corner. Reed moves baseline, tried to dump it down to Flavin. It's tipped by the Cats, and they steal it. Nice job to save it on the baseline. Mopajila scoops it up off the glass, doesn't go, rebound, he's got his own, and shot is short, and Dubois will pick it up off the floor. It'd be a nice, <laughs> saying the shot was short. <laughs> Let's just say it didn't make it to the rim. Three-point attempt by Reed, that gets the bounce. That hurt right there. Reed now with 11 points in the ball game. That's one of those shots and, and hoops that you make at some point in the game you say wow it might take the wind out of the sails of the visitors here now duel trying to drive inside there he got fouled by flavin 19 point lead for the black bears and this is more or less what we expected bobby with cop and rath and sorrentine on the bench it is but it's still not easier to go out there and do it i mean from i've played a lot of basketball in my days and you know from time to time, you go out there against teams that, oh, yes, you know, you're supposed to beat them, but it doesn't always uh, appear to be, you know, it doesn't, it's not that easy. I mean, again, you're talking about kids here, 18, 19 years old, you know, they're, they're not going to go out there every time and, and beat the team that they're supposed to beat every time. You see it night in and night out in high school, college. Things happen. You always have to play hard. You will miss the first foul shot, missed them both. Now the rebound is knocked over by the scorer's table and knocked away by the Black Bears. You know, Duel's another one of those cases as we see a McCrory coming back in for the Cats. He averages uh, six points per game. And uh, again, everybody just down on the averages because they rely so much on Coppenrath and Sorrentine. You know, when they're scoring uh, close to 37 points per game between the two of them, <laughs> it takes care of a lot of offense. Nice move by Siplicki. Off the glass and good. That's the first basket of the half for Vermont. Took them over four minutes. 
17 point lead for the Black Bears. Campbell has it out deep, gives it to Markwood. And they did, Maine did force Vermont to get out of that man to man. They're now into a more of a matchup zone. You can see there. into Flavin, get knocked away by the Catamounts. Yeah, sorry, you can see there, they're able to get the double team quicker in that matchup zone than if they're playing man to man. Timeout on the floor, the Black Bears by 17. We're back to the Alphond right after this. Back to action here at the Alpha. Black Bears with the ball and the 17-point lead. Markwood has it up top, goes to Height on the right side. Now Reed spins it over left side to Markwood for a three. Off the mark, rebound Clemesh, or Hayne, excuse me, for Vermont. Don't mind seeing Markwood shoot. We'd like to see him more actually put the ball up a little bit. He's had a hard time getting his rhythm back after being out for quite a few games with an injury. Foul on the Black Bears. Both teams in the second half here shooting on opposite spectrums. Maine just under 80%. Vermont just over 12%. Sabuki driving through and Dubois just slams the ball out of bounds. By the way, uh, Tim Throckton wanted to confirm what we thought, uh, Bobby. We mentioned that uh, Taylor Coppenrath had got up off the bench and left. Uh, he is on his way back to Burlington with his father right now. So apparently just not feeling well and they're going to get him back home. Three-point shot by Hain. No good. Rebound Black Bears. Outlet down to height. He thought about that three, but then got the bounce pass to Reed. Now Campbell swings it down to Markwood. Back up top to height. Inside pass to Dubois. Reed wide open for three, and he'll hit it. Great pass by Dubois right there. Taking care of his guards. He won't miss too many of those, and he is four of five from the three-point line today. Kevin Reed. Biggest lead of the game now for the Black Bears, 20 points. Especially if you leave him that wide open. Yes. More often than not, he's going to hit that shot. So, in the corner, Siplicki for the Catamounts. Mopajila now drives right through, lays it up and in. Cut through the defense. Man, pushing him back fast the other way. Markwood has it up top. Right side, it goes to height. Now Markwood swings it left side. Reed's going to try it again. That one's no good. Not quite as open that time. Campbell gets the rebound. Oh. Reverse layup. Count it. And the Bangor boy gets fouled. That's a nice play on your final home game, isn't it? It's great work by Joe. Not only to stay with it and get the rebound. You see the shot here by Reed. Another nice look there. Just doesn't get it to go down. Oh, Joe, great those long arms just reach right down over. No contact with the body. Got bailed out there by... Who was it? Duel fouled him with the body. And he said, what the heck? I might as well throw it up and might go. So Joe will miss the foul shot, but he's got 10 points now today. Steal on the other end by Reed and somehow managed to get it to Markwood. Great play by Reed. Now he fires it down to Campbell. Baseline jumper. Oh, yeah. Nice. Not much dribbling. Good things happen when you don't have to dribble the ball. Nice sign over there behind the Black Bear bench. Go, Joe. <laughs> He's got his own fan club here. And it's on the other end. Ball knocked out of bounds. Catamounts will keep it, but now they're down by 22. Biggest lead of the game for the Black Bears as Campbell knocks it away. They're firing in all cylinders here in the second half, Bobby. Let's see, they're outscoring them, what, 18 to 4? Very good. It's good quick I math. Do, I can 18 do a little math, four. yeah. <laughs> I had your back on the four. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Thanks for backing me up on that. Appreciate it. Now Duel out deep. Campbell right there with him. Gives it to Mopajila. Whoa. Tried to take the shot from the foul line, but had to dish down to Duel. And inside, McCrory will slam it home, and he got fouled, I think, by Height. Let's see. Yep, foul will go against Height. He fouled him. He didn't foul him very hard. You see, good help defense all the way around. Joe just misses it there. Height got him, yep, right there. And that is McCrory's first basket of the game as Jensen comes back in for the Catamounts. And again, just sticking with our theme here of these guys not getting a chance to play much. McCrory averaging .6 points per game. He just more than doubled that with that basket. And he missed the foul shot. Rebound Dubois fighting his own teammate for it, Ian Reed. Down to height. 
Back up top to Markwood. 13 minutes to go in the ball game. 20 point lead for the Black Bears. Looking to clinch that fifth seed if they can in America East. Now down in the corner, the foul call on the Catabout. So I think it's Mopajila down there. Main doing a good job moving the ball. That's a tough defense to play if you're Vermont right now. You're out there, they're looking a little tired. You're down 20. You're trying to trap. Just it's a tough, tough hill to climb. So Markwood brings it up top for the Black Bears. Has it on the right side. Osport pass to height. Trying to set up Campbell on the baseline. Now back out to Markwood. Now Campbell slides across the baseline, lost the pass, and now we got a tie-up under there. And let's see. Possession is going to the Black Bears. I think the main fans wanted a foul there by the reaction behind us. Oh, there's a lot of Joe fans there, I think, too. Mixed <laughs> That's in. Joe's uh, cheering section over behind the bench. Hey, wait a second. Our guy got fouled there. Come on. Reed now. Campbell with it. Spins left side to height. He'll fire up the three just over his defender, and he drills it. That's that a tough shot. A hand right in his face. And now we got a battle for it over in front of the main bench. Who won that battle? And oh boy. Black oh, Bear oh. Uh, got hurt over there. Is that uh, Reed diving for yeah. the ball? Hey. Here's the three point shot. Look at that. Hand <laughs> right in his face. Well, that was good defense by McCrory. That's one of those ones you just kind of shake your head and say, well, great shot. Well, good. Maine's going to get it back after the great play by Reed. I think Tom Brennan uh, wanted to know why it was Maine basketball. He thought it might have gone out of bounds off the Black Bears. Shows you what kind of player, sorry, shows you what kind of player Reed is right there. I mean, up 23 points and still diving for the ball. And the thing is, I feel bad for the guys at the bench that he was diving into. That's right. <laughs> he, he is rugged. Campbell inside, gets another one. Another great pass inside by Mark Wood. They're just having their way with that defense right now. And I think with Vermont, they can't go man to man. Maine was having to their way with them on that with the with the big three in there Flavin Dubois and Joe and in this zone is it's not working Joe now with 14 points having a nice final home game as the foul will be called on the Black Bears on the other end and I believe uh, he's the team's leading scorer right now nice look away from Markwood right there 1146 to go in the game Maine leading 62 37 we're back after this Well, we remind you to watch local Maine news on the web free of charge. You can visit WABI.TV and click on the link labeled Watch TV 5 News. McCrory at the line. And he gets them both. And Maine just on a torrid pace here in the second half, Bobby. They're just shooting lights out. And that comes from the nice passing, really. Three points, three point uh, percentage for the game. 58 percent, 52 for the game. 77% they're shooting for the second half. Other side of that, Vermont. 37% for the game. 12% behind the three-point line. Yeah, they're struggling here in the second half, to stay, say the least. Just eight points so far. And we're approaching the halfway point here of the second half. Boy, nice uh, effort there by Reed to steal the ball away. But Mopajil has got it. Big lead here for the Black Bears. Vermont with the ball. Down low it goes in the baseline. Nothing there, so... Schneider will try the floater, and he got it. Good head fake. Got Flavin up in the air that time. Created an open shot for himself. Now Markwood over to Campbell. Fakes the three out to Reed. He'll fire it up. No good. Rebound inside. Flavin fighting for it, and I think it was knocked out of bounds by the Cats. Yeah. Reed was mad at himself that time. He knows he's going to have those. Joe was giving him a little heck there. Cost me an assist, he said. Up top it comes to Campbell. Tied for the leading scorer in this game. He and Reed both have 14 points for the Black Bears. Clavin with 12, so three main players in double figures here. Nobody in double figures for the Catamounts. Now Joe's got 16 now, just like that. If you're able to work the ball around and get it to the baseline, and going up against a zone like that, you're going to have great success because it, it just breaks down when the ball gets to the baseline. Now Schneider for three, drains it for Vermont. 64-44, it's a 20-point game. Now Markwood, right side, cross-court pass to Campbell. Inside to Flavin, lost the dribble, but it comes right back to Joe. Gets it to Height in the corner to Markwood. Three, and he answers right back. 
Nice penetration that time by Height over to Markwood. Nice to see him put a hoop down here. By the way, Joe Campbell with his season high, he's got 16 points, tops his season high of 14. 24 is his career high. Coach Ted Woodward in his first season here at Maine and walked down the other end and Tom Brennan in his last season at Vermont. 19 great years with the uh, Catamounts. Well-respected, well-liked. This team going in number one to the America East Tourney. Ball knocked out of bounds by the Black Bears. Really put that program on the map, yes, even nationally, has. not just regionally anymore, but nationally the last two or three years. America East champs the last two years, the regular season champs outright this year, and uh, they'll be tough in that tourney, oh boy. <laughs> Assuming that uh, Sorrentine is okay, his injuries, he's got a week to heal here before the quarterfinals, and Coppenrath with a flu today, you gotta think he's gonna be better by next Saturday, so he'll be back in there as they play the eight or nine seed in their quarterfinal game. Here's Duell for three, no good, but Schneider gets the rebound. Fires it down on the baseline. Jensen, shot no good, Flavin with a rebound. Main defense still working hard. Nice to see. Good job by Height there, just standing still. They lob it into Flavin, he goes right to the hoop, and he is fouled by Josh Duell. So Flavin, who's got 12 points in the game, will head to the line. Seven rebounds to go along with those points, 12 points. They do a good job of getting that ball inside when you got Flavin in the ball game, don't they? They sure do. And Vermont, without Coppenrath in there, really no answer for it. Well, Flavin's now five for five from the free throw line in this game as Reed's going to come out. Turner coming back in for Maine. Well, Reed's had a fine game. 14 points, including four of six from the three-point line. Flamesh checks back in for Vermont as Duell will get a breather here. And Flavin, a perfect six for six from the free throw line today. And he's got 14 points. So you got Flavin with 14, Reed with 14, and Campbell with 16. And Schneider traveled. Did put that ball down as he made the move top of the circle. I was wondering how he got away from Turner so easily. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he wasn't that quick. Took that extra step. 25-point lead for the Black Bears. Under nine minutes to go in the game. I'll try to update you here as we move along. Two other scores across America East to hopefully find out where Maine will be in the tourney. Here's Height for three. Drills at everything going right for the Black Bears right now. When you move the ball like that and make passes like that, you, you make good shooters really good shooters because the shots become so much easier for them. Nice pass down to Klemesh, and uh, he hits the reverse layup and gets fouled. And that was really poor defense that time by Maine, just miscommunication. Pick on the low block, and they did not switch. I'll tell you, assuming that the Black Bears hang on the last eight and a half minutes here, Bobby, with the big lead, and a lot of folks may say, okay, well, you beat Vermont. They didn't have Coppenrath. They didn't have Sorrentine as uh, Klemesh completes the three-point uh, play. But, you know, they just needed a win. They need a win. Exactly. After losing five of their last seven. Exactly. Pass down to Turner. Oh, found Flavin underneath. Great pass from Turner. And Flavin now has 16. Again, good job breaking the trap, going right to the basket. You're always going to have the numbers breaking out of that. And good decisions are the key to that. Schneider now. Turn around. Short. Rebound. Let's see. McCrory's got it underneath there. Throws it back in. A nice play by McCrory. Got it to Mopajila. Schneider will bring it back up deep for the Cats as they reset the shot clock. Jensen on the left wing to Schneider. The three-point shot short. Rebound hauled down by Campbell. Here comes Markwood. Good decision by Markwood. Didn't have the numbers. Pull it back out. No hurry. Come on back to that man-to-man. -man. Markwood goes right side. Bounces it down to Flavin. Now Flavin backing his man in. Out it goes to Turner. In the corner, Markwood wide open for three. It's short. Rebound Schneider for the Catamounts. Oh, height the steal. Good anticipation. Two on one for the Black Bears. Over to Markwood. Back to Turner. He was going for the slam, and Schneider will foul him. Nice sharing of the ball right yeah, there. Very unselfish. Great job by height. He's had a few steals here today. That's, that's his fourth steal. 
This is great work. So the Black Bears with the 27 point lead. Timeout on the floor. We're back after this. Welcome back to the Alphon. John Small along with Bobby Campbell. Now uh, 7-19 to go in the game in Maine with a big lead and Ernest Turner at the foul line for the Black Bears. Back after missing four straight games. He came back against BU, had three points in that game. And let's see tonight to think that's his uh, seventh point. Or this afternoon, I should say. Turner's second shot is up and good. So the Black Bears just putting it to the Catamounts right now, 76-47. Here come the Cats on the other end, Siplicki. Good defense by Markwood. Up top it goes to Payne. They make the move on the left side. And back to Siplicki for three, got this pass from Hain too. Siplicki, nice looking freshman. They've got a, played a few freshmen out there on the court today. Siplicki. Got nine uh, points. Flamash is just a sophomore. Corey's a freshman. And he's got nine points today. It's the three point shot, no good by Turner, and he averages one and a half per game. So a lot of these guys getting a chance to get those averages up today with Coppenrath and Sorrentine out. Now Clemesh, spin move in the paint. Nice move, but uh, didn't get the shot to fall. Too strong off the glass. Black Bears kick it out quickly. Campbell on the left wing, back up top to Markwood. 6.20 to go. Now on the right sideline, Turner, cross-court pass to Markwood. Black Bears in no hurry here with a big lead. Lob it down to Flavin again. Flavin, cross-court to Turner in the corner to Markwood. He'll drive baseline, kicks it back out to Reed, fires up the three from the corner, got it! And Reed is now five of seven from the three-point line, and he's got 17 in the game. Well, and I'll tell you, the two he missed were wide open, and he was mad at himself for missing them. Nice, nice job sending him up, though, by Markwood. A lot of Reed's shots today have been wide open, and that's due to his teammates finding him wide, wide open in those positions. Siplicki takes the jumper just inside the circle. No good. Oh, nice rebound by Klemesh, but the putback won't fall, and Flavin says, uh-uh, one time, that's it. Flavin's going to double-double now. He's had a fantastic double digits, game. points and rebounds. He has. Now Flavin looking to move inside, gets it out to Joe Campbell, fires up the three. It's around and out. Rebound to the Catamounts. On the other end, Payne driving. Got himself stuck in the paint there. Gets it back out to Jensen. He'll take it right to the hole. Puts it up and in. Let's see how many uh, rebounds Joe had today. How many has he got there, Bobby? He's got five. Jensen with that last hoop. He's a senior playing in his last regular season game. Out to Markwood. Now Campbell with it. Campbell spins in the paint, kicks it out to Markwood, wide open for three, and he'll make the cast pay right there. I don't think Maine has taken a shot here very often in the second half that I would say, oh, wait, don't shoot it. You know, they've all been good shots. Even the ones they've been missed. They no, we haven't, missed, we we haven't gotten the update, them. but they still have to be pretty darn close to 70, 75 percent from the floor here in the second half. They haven't missed much. Well, it's not hard to miss when you're shooting basically horse shots. Well, Siplicki answers with a three of his own, a 30-point lead back down to 27 with 4.08 to go. Been all Black Bears here in the second half. They led by eight at halftime. But uh, they never let Vermont get out of the shoots in that uh, beginning of the second half. They came right out and scored, what, the first eight points anyway. Now Campbell lost it behind his back, but he got it back to Markwood, dumps it down to Flavin. Oh. Wide open, easy layup. These are the halves you love to have as a coach. Oh, boy. You know, you, you, you don't just get guys many sharing like this. the ball. No, you do not. <laughs> and they won't get any the rest of the year. For as no. many games as they have left, they won't. Oh, there's the Joe, the Joe section again. <laughs> Duel kind of elbowed him a little bit, or so they thought. Give him a little grief. It was actually, was actually Clemesh. Yep. Yeah, it was actually Clemesh, so. So 3.15 to go, Black Bears in charge here. Playing out the string, into Flavin again, tried to slam it home, couldn't quite get it, but uh, 
The way points. things are going for the Black Bears today, kind of bounced off the front of the rim and went in. So, and we've got some substitutions coming in here. For Vermont, one for Maine. We'll see the replay here on that last play. As Markwood, great pass, great pass. It's an interesting play right there. The officials, there hadn't been a stoppage of play in a while, and they saw there were subs over there, and they let him come in. Took an, yeah, they took an official timeout, just kind of a, I don't know exactly what they call that. Uh, just like a continuation. Oh, now they get the TV timeout anyway. So 2.53 to go. It's all Maine right now over Vermont. We're back after this. Back at Alphon Arena, John Small and Bobby Campbell. 2.53 to go in this one. Vermont at the line. Trailing by, let's see if I can do my math right there, Bobby. That's 29 points. Is that right? <laughs> you got num it. These numbers are getting too big today for me. Schneider at the line hits the first shot. Again, he's averaging four and a half points per game. And what was that, his ninth point today? Chance to cut it to 27 right here. So these guys really getting a chance to play with uh, Coppenrath and Sorrentine out. And you know, today it's certainly benefited Maine to have Coppenrath and Sorrentine out. But if you're Vermont, this may benefit you when you get into the tournament. These guys have all got some significant playing time now. Yeah, if nothing else, then just do some game legs. I can tell you, if you're a player on the bench, and even though you're practicing every day, it's different in the game. It's a different intensity. Sure it takes a lot more out of you. So it's nice for these guys to get this kind of chance to get on the floor in a fast-paced, real game, if you will, uh, situation. So Flavin at the line here. He got fouled. Leading scorer for the Black Bears this afternoon. 20 points and 10 rebounds for Flavin. As a Klemesh has fouled out, he'll head to the bench. And Mopa Gila comes back in. Flavin, just a fantastic afternoon. Oh, I was going to say he was six for six from the line. I didn't want to jinx him, but uh, didn't matter anyway. He's now six of seven. I knew what you were going to say. You, you did. <laughs> That's that one, though. 21 points now for Flavin. And a 28-point lead for the Black Bears. Haven't gotten any uh, recent updates on the uh, scores from around America East, so... Not sure if Maine will uh, clinch that fifth spot or not. I think they do with this win. Oh, nice block by Flavin from oh, yeah. the weak side. Just pinned it to the back to the backboard. second block of the game. Markwood on the other end for Maine. 2.15 to go. They lob it into Flavin. Kick it back out to Markwood. Now Turner wide open for three. Missed it. And Joe Campbell hauls down the rebound. I can't say enough about how the big men of Maine, Campbell, Dubois, Flavin, all three of them have passed today. Just great passing. They've been in sync, no question about it, especially here in the second half. Hey, that was the key when uh, Coach Woodward brought the starting five back out to start the second half, and those three big guys just took the game over. Dubois, turnaround hook shot, no good. Rebound to Vermont, under two minutes to go now. Into McCrory, high off the glass, got it, and he'll be fouled by Dubois. And here come the mass substitutions for Maine as Woodward, Coach Woodward's got them all up over there at the scorer's table. Nice pass by Saplicki right here. Corey. So the seniors all come out together here. Nice sight right here. All four seniors come to the bench. Joe Campbell, Mark Flavin, David Dubois, Chris Markwood. And the fans on their feet here. Last home game for the Black Bears and a nice move by Coach Woodward to bring them all out together. That's right, because it, even though it's his first year as the head coach, he had a lot to do with all those yes, guys coming did. to this school. So yes, he did. You know, he's, he's known those kids from, from however many years ago when he started to recruit them. So McCrory completes the three-point play, 1.34 to go. Black Bears have shot 72% from the floor in this second half. Eight for 25. Is that unbelievable? 56% for the game. Shooting lights out. And again, just due to taking high percentage shots, set up by nice passing. Vermont got the ball back on the turnover. Mopajila almost turned it back over to Maine. Instead, the Cats keep it. Schneider on the right side. He loses it and he's going to roll it right into the backcourt. And that will be a violation. 107 to go. Black Bears have this one well in hand. 
Long ride back to Burlington for the Catamounts, but uh, they knew coming in here, they're the number one seed in the America East tourney, so no matter what happened today, they had that spot nailed down. It's a good thing Coppenrath left early. This wouldn't have made him feel any better. No. The score. Turner lobs it inside. Nice move in there, but uh, Hucknell can't get the shot to fall and then uh, missed on the second attempt. Caps will push it up. Siplicki floats it in the paint. Got it. Nice looking shot right there. Yeah, he's a nice looking player. Again, I think, like I said earlier, I think he's only a freshman. Yeah, he is. And he's not getting a lot of shots right now playing behind T.J. Sorrentin. So this is a really great opportunity for him. And he's shown he's a player here. He's had some nice shots today. Height up shot up top to Turner. The three-point shots are coming out. And uh, a foul is going to be committed by Oli down there in the paint. So we'll walk it down to the other end. Woodward wants a word with height with 27 seconds to go. So it's been a struggle at times this year for the Black Bears, but they're going to finish on a high note in the regular season here. I was looking to see what the most points was the main scored this year. They had 90 points versus UMaine Farmington back in December. Only averaging about 63, 64 points a game, I believe, as a team. Well, you're going to up that average when you shoot 72%. Uh, <laughs> yes, that, you will. That, that's going to help a lot. Yes, you will. And Corey, second shot. Up and good. 87-66 main, 25 seconds to go in this one. No foul, no foul. Been all Black Bears since we began the second half. They led by eight at halftime but really turned up the intensity when they came out of that locker room. And Vermont just content to let the time tick away here. As, uh, as Tom Brennan's already gone over to hug uh, Coach Woodward, and we still have three seconds left, but uh, it's over. That'll do it. Black Bears win it. 87-66. Maine will improve to 13-14 and 14 on the year and 8-10. and 10. In the conference, Vermont falls to 21 and 6, 16 and 2 in the conference. But uh, it really didn't matter much because they had the number one spot clinch, so they'll head back to Burlington knowing that. So, Black Bears win it. 87 66. We'll be back to the Alphonse right after this. We are back, and we have a couple of players, a couple of seniors, as a matter of fact, on senior day, so that's appropriate. Mark Flavin had a terrific game, 20 points, uh, double figures and rebounds, too. Tell me honestly, Mark Flavin, were you disappointed at all that Taylor Coppenrath was not in the starting lineup, or did you just say, hey, this is going to be a great game because he's not in the lineup? Disappointed or not? Oh, yeah, I mean, everyone knew that, you know, we want to play against the best competition, but we just look at it as, you know, we got four seniors. We wanted to go out. We want to go over the bank, so... We came out, we, we played beautiful. I mean, everyone was passing the ball, and it just, it was great. And I, I mean, I can't ask for a better a better day than this. Joe, tell me a little bit about the difficulty in the first half. It took about 15 minutes to sort things out. Were you expecting a different lineup uh, before the game and uh, preparing different things? I mean, we've prepared for a different lineup, but with this team, I mean, this Vermont team, it's not just two guys that are, that, that you know, do everything. That's a great basketball team that we play against today. You know, we, we exploited some of their weaknesses. You know, we moved the ball beautifully, I thought. Everybody shared the basketball. Everybody got their points, and everybody rebound. And they were, you know, wanted done when they were shooting. So, you know, it was important for us to, to do that. And even, uh, you know, even without those two guys, I mean, they're a tremendous basketball team. So we knew we had our hands full today. It is a sub-500 year for this Black Bear team. Do you feel as this year, as though you're poised to make a run in the postseason tournament? Can anything happen this year, Mark? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, now we're in a rhythm. You know what I mean? We've been playing for almost six months now together. So we know uh, we know what our weaknesses and we know what our strengths are. And we're just going to execute execute on offense and get stops on defense. And, this guy's the limit. Two in a row, Joe, and, and, and over 80 points means a whoopee pie for the fans. Another crowd. Uh, is that what it means? Hey, <laughs> cash him in for sure. Good job, guys. Right, Thanks thank very you. much, Mark Flavin and Joe Campbell and Ted Woodward, of uh, coach, the coach here. And uh, you end the season with a victory. You go into the playoffs with a win and playing better, and things looking pretty good when you look up there on the scoreboard. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, we this is the first time in a long time we've had our team. You know, uh, this is the team we had uh, started off the year with back in November, December, and uh, had a lot of success with these guys. And, you know, some of our guys who have been injured have keep coming back. And, uh, 
you know, uh, we've actually got a chance to kind of get in rhythm a little bit this week, but really it's the first time that we've had a chance to have our whole team, uh, you know, our close to our whole team with us and functional uh, from a health standpoint in quite a while. So we're certainly very pleased. With everyone making the America East tournament and one team coming out of there going automatically to the NCAA tournament, were you hoping maybe for a test against Sorrentine and against Coppenrath to see where your Black Bears are now? And are you a little bit disappointed that they didn't play today? Well, you know, I think uh, I'm disappointed for them because I think, you know, anytime you, uh, your seniors and those kids have done so much for those programs, uh, you know, it's, it's certainly uh, hard for them to be out missing their last uh, game. You know, it's hard for us, too. I mean, you know, we were very excited to play against them. We thought we uh, really played a very good game against them up at their place. And uh, But, you know, it's part of basketball, and we've had the same situation on our team. So, uh, you know, I understand, uh, you know, how it all goes. But, uh, you know, we, we, we prepared all week to play against their best. And uh, even though, um, you know, Coppenrath was not out there today, you know, I still thought defensively we had the intensity that we needed and the rebound that we needed to uh, to, to play very well, uh, no matter really who we were playing against today. So I'm kind of pleased with, uh, you know, how that went defensively, and I thought offensively we passed the ball beautifully. Well, most likely it's on the road for the rest of the season uh, now. Uh, best of luck in the playoffs, and uh, hope to see you make that NCAA tournament. That would be terrific. That would be great. Thank okay. you very much. Ted Woodward, and of course, uh, Black Bears finishing the season. From now on, they'll hit the road. Uh, the tournament is held in one spot, and unless uh, some lower-seeded team, lower than Maine, makes the championship game with Maine, then Maine would be uh, on the road for the rest of the way. Let's go back over to John Small and Bobby Campbell, guys. All right, thanks, Tim, and that's a great image right there, uh, Bobby. I think Joe Campbell has hugged everybody <laughs> in the stands that he can find. That's his section. As he has played his uh, final game here at the Alphon as a senior. Wonderful career for the Bangor High School star. I'll never forget that uh, last second basket as uh, Bangor won the state championship uh, against Deering uh, four or five years back now. And uh, just a, a fantastic image right there as we see Joe up in the stands. And boy, he came to play in his uh, final game here, didn't he? He and Mark Flavin. He did. And, and as a senior going out, they don't care who was in the lineup or who wasn't in the lineup. All they'll ever remember was they had a great win. They had a, a good time. They shared the ball well, like Joe mentioned. Everybody scored a bunch of points. They had four players in double digits. Well, our player of the game is uh, brought to you by CES Civil Engineering Services, engineering ideas that are right for Maine. And uh, boy, tough choice. Uh, we wanted to go maybe with the local boy, but uh, it's gotta be Mark Flavin. Just a, a fantastic uh, game for him, a double-double. He did 21 points, 11 rebounds, two blocks. You know, shot lights out. He was uh, seven, or eight, seven of eight from the free throw line, seven and 12 from the field. Uh, we, we had to give it to him today, but every, everybody really, did well today for Maine. And yeah, their percentage came down a little bit. They finished 62% in the second half. How about that? <laughs> well, today's image of the game is brought to you by MRI Associates, bringing your family images that save the lives of loved ones. That image right there are the four seniors uh, checking out for the final time here at Alphon Arena. Mark Flavin, of course, Joe Campbell, David Dubois, and Chris Markwood. A nice hand as they all go to the bench and... Uh, Nice way to end uh, your regular season as a, a senior to beat Vermont of all teams here at home. Again, I know Taylor Coppenrath wasn't here. T.J. Sorrentine wasn't here. But they needed to win. They'd lost 5 of 7. They needed a little momentum going into the America East Tournament. And, and, and all those open shots today, maybe those will give the, the guys confidence. You know, Reed, Mark Wood, who'd been struggling after coming back from those injuries. Turner had a chance to come back and get into the flow of a game after being injured. And, and only this is the second game back. So just a nice game all around. We still don't know. Uh, the folks are on the phone here at the Alphon. We've been waiting for some score updates. Uh, we still don't know if the Black Bears will be fifth or sixth. Uh, we are waiting for the Binghamton BU score. If a Binghamton does, in fact, beat BU, then Maine will go sixth because they'll lose the tiebreaker with Binghamton, and they'll play BU uh, in the quarterfinal round. If a BU comes back and uh, beats Binghamton, they were down at the half, then uh, Maine would play Albany, being the fifth seed. They'd play number four, Albany in the uh, quarterfinals as I look down the uh, table there and uh, they're still on the phone so I guess we don't have an update yet but uh, Black Bear is just happy to get this win and I think uh, Tim made a good point uh, doesn't matter if Coppenrath or a Soren team were in the lineup they just needed a, a, a good output today and boy when you could beat Vermont 87 to 66 I don't care if Coppenrath and Sorrentine are in the lineup or not you beat a good team that's right and I'm I was looking across over at coach Brennan I'm I'm sure this wasn't the way he wanted to have his last regular season game go in his career but uh, you know, he's, he's looking for the big time this time. He's, he wants his final win to be in the American East Tournament. 
Well, he's had an outstanding career, and uh, Tom Brennan was honored before the game today with a rocking chair, 19 seasons at Vermont, and uh, he'll still have a chance to get a few more wins in the America East Tourney as his team will go number one. But for today, the Black Bears come out on top. They defeat Vermont 87-66, to and they'll go in as either the fifth or the sixth seed in the America East Tourney. That's going to do it for us from Alphonse Arena on this Sunday afternoon. From my partner, Bobby Campbell, our director, Andre Cormier, and the whole TV5 crew, I'm John Small. Have a great day, everyone.